Hello everyone. Today I'm going to demonstrate how quick and easy it is to configure a simple SQL query object within EasyBuilder Pro. In one of our last videos, we discussed how to use our SQL synchronization feature. Well, our SQL query objects are just as easy to use, and to get started, I'll open an instance of EasyBuilder Pro. And we'll navigate to the data slash history tab. Just as we did within our last SQL video, we'll need to add a database server within our project by selecting our database server on the top right and then select New in the following window. Here, I'll configure my server settings. In our drop down list, I'm going to select MySQL and then define my IP, which for now I'll set as 127.0.0.1. And you'll see why I'm using this in a second. Then I'll configure my port settings, which I'll leave as default for now. And of course, my server requires authentication. And I'll also enter the database name. Although in our last video we defined both a control and a status address, these are not entirely necessary as the database will connect automatically once the HMI starts. For this demonstration, I'll create a status address that will simply let us know that the HMI is connected. Now I'm going to open MySQL Workbench and configure a simple data table. Since I've configured a local server within my demonstration, I'm going to log in to my local MySQL server. And I'll select my Amazon schema and then right click and select Create Table. For my table's name in this demonstration, I'll just call it Query. My first object, I'll call it ID. It will be my primary key and, of course, a non null value. And I'll set this to auto increment as well. And let's say that my second object is called product. And let's make this a character type with an element count of 10. And my last entry. Because again, this is a very simple demonstration. But my last entry will be count, which will represent the number of items within a list. And all three of the items I've created should have not null configured. Now that I'm finished, I'll apply my configuration, and we'll head back to our project and import this data. Selecting our query object, we'll be prompted with a menu similar to our server's configuration. And we'll select New to create a new query object. I'll start by giving our object a description. In this case, I'll call it my query. Now, during our server's configuration, I used my PC's internal IP, 127.0.0.1. The reason why I use this is so that I can import my table's configuration, meaning that I will only have to create this configuration once. To perform an import, all I need to do is ensure that our computer is connected to the SQL server in question. Afterwards, I'll enter the table name and then select Import from Server. As you can see, our import was successful, and now I'll need to identify and correct the data types. Because our data autofilled, we'll need to ensure that there is no overlapping with any other registers in my HMI project. Right now, our server is using LW0 and LW1, so I'll configure the schema's starting register to utilize LW2. Next, I'll select my command tab and change our query object's command register to LW9. Again, to prevent overlapping, and I'll also create the following set word objects to create, read, and update my SQL Server. With those objects created, I'd like to point out that I also added the entry objects associated with my SQL Query's schema configuration. Before I download this to my device, 
I want to create a SQL query view object as well. And this object will help us visualize the data currently stored on our server. To do this, I'm going to select this object, which can be found directly under our SQL query object within the data slash history tab. I'll leave its configuration as default and add this to my page. We should also reconfigure the IP of my SQL Server so that my HMI will know which device to target. I'll take care of this quickly and then download this to our device. As you can see, our CMT is now connected to our SQL Server, and submitting a read command will display a blank data sheet. Let's go ahead and enter some data here and show that this properly syncs on both ends. Now looking at our SQL Server and our CMT application, we can clearly see that our SQL Query configuration is working as expected. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.